How's everybody doing today? Good. Ready to hit an opponent instead of your teammates? <laughs> yes, uh, it's been a long camp. Uh, you know, going in every day, going against Rodney, Shannon, Rashad, Tyler Johnson. After a while, we'll finally get to play somebody in a different color. Can't wait. How do you view the, the targeting rule and, and where that comes for, for you and what you possibly could see change if you wanted to? Um, I can see where they're coming from, uh, and I respect it a lot. Uh, we, Our coaches have implemented a tackling system before practice to make sure that we work on making sure our targeting zone is lower like it's supposed to, rather go lower than higher because all the time receivers run drags, posts, um, lows, all types of things, and we got to make sure when they're coming across the middle that we get under so we don't have a repeat of what happened last year. We had too many targeting calls. Talk about your academic, your academics as good as your football ability. Is it my academic ability? What grades you're getting? Oh. Uh, uh, what your GPA is and stuff like that. What uh, you're taking in school. Uh, right now I'm a kinesiology major which is the study of the movement of the body. Um, I currently have a 3.1 GPA. Um, I get A's and B's, uh, I'm taking science classes. I'm on my, on my path to graduate on time. How do you feel about the development of the linebackers over the fall camp? Uh, great. Uh, it was a, I was happy to have everybody healthy. Uh, knowing in the spring we had Cody Polk was injured, Blake Cashman, Julian Huff, they were all injured. And to have everybody healthy throughout the whole camp and just to see how we produced over this whole time was great. It was a great feeling going into the season. How have you gone about being a leader for some of those younger guys in the linebacking court? Um, just taking them under my wing uh, whenever uh, I happen to do extra drills or extra film session, always bringing them in and teaching them the way of how to dissect the film, how to look at certain things to be able to read the formation, how to be able to be on the field and remember certain things that you see so you can be able to become a better football player. What's it like with the sub package with six linebackers on the field? Uh, it's crazy, uh, I'll tell you that. Uh, just to have so much athleticism on the field at one time is, is wild, something that most teams won't ever see. Do you have any idea how often that might happen in, in a game? I don't right now. I do not have uh, the information about how often that will be used. Uh, right now, I just know we're running the 4-3 defense. The, that's always our base defense to start off with, but I can't tell you much on that. Would you be surprised if it isn't used some all, all the time? <laughs> uh, we'll see how the effectiveness work, uh, how it works for the stopping the other teams on probably, i say, third downs, maybe long second downs. i say that would be the situations they're used. but. I say, as the effectiveness, uh, see how much, how good it's used. That's the more we'll use it. How's your wind up in Minnesota? How come you wind up here? Uh, Are there other schools recruiting you? Uh, yes, I had uh, other schools recruiting me, but this was my biggest Power Five offer. This is my only Power Five offer. Uh, uh, I was recruited in Georgia uh, to a lot of Division Two schools. Uh, I had a one double A school, but uh, Minnesota was my only power five, and they took a chance on me, and I'm thankful. Hey, John, one of the big questions about the defense is the cornerback position. What, where do you think you guys are at in terms of the development of some of those guys like Antonio and Keandre? Um, I feel like we're in a good position. Uh, they have developed a lot. Antonio, he's been in the rotation. He played last year. Um, there's also uh, Keandre. This will be his first year playing, but we also have Alonzo Creighton. He's uh, developed a lot. Um, Kunle, sometimes you might see Kunle playing a little corner just to help us out. But I feel like uh, Coach Mo has developed the DBs to a point where any DB is ready to play. Um, Coney is still developing, coming back from his surgery. But every DB, I say, uh, they'll be ready to play this season. John, can, the things you that on, can you touch on dedicating this season to dear late father? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, he was a very important person to me. I talked to him after every game, and I talked to him on Sundays, and he he always watched every game, and he'll be able to tell me what I did wrong, what I did right, things I should work on, and it's really touching. Like he was playing, he was supposed to come to a couple of games this year. We talked about it, and I, we already had it planned out. He was coming to the first game, 
He's going to come to Michigan as well and then my senior day. But things didn't work out like it was supposed to. So they came to see something. Will your mom be here next Thursday? Yes, my mom. She'll uh, make it to probably as many games as she can. She's even coming to Oregon. <laughs> John, the uh, music that PJ uses in practice, I mean, how much of it is familiar to you and how helpful is it to, uh, for focus and pace? You said the music? Yeah, music. Uh, the music, I enjoy it. Uh, I've heard uh, he mixes it up every practice, and it just helps. Sometimes you're just listening to the music, and you're on the field, and sometimes feel like you're even in a game, because at the game, you hear music during intermissions, timeouts. And you just can relax, be yourself, have fun. Because at the end of the day, you're loving the game of football, but you also want to have fun with your teammates. So we love it. In terms of a uh, football culture, what are the biggest differences between Tracy Clays and now P.J. Fleck? Uh, I won't say it's much big of a difference. They both uh, preach on doing it for the guys next to you. At the end of the day, the coaches aren't on the field. It's just 11 guys. and. They can't play the game for us. They both put us into both the best positions to win, and we have to go out there and execute on Saturdays. What impresses about the Buffalo team are going to be playing next week? Um, they can run the ball. They like to run the ball a lot on first and second downs. I know that. Uh, they have a spread. They kind of have a spread offense. Uh, I know the receivers like to go vertical, and they're pretty much balanced. They also have a RPO, a nice RPO game. So I can't wait to see what happens Thursday. Steve Richardson said that he might get triple teamed at times this year. If there's three on him, what does that mean for you? I'm coming around making TFL. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we've been talking about Me and Steve have been talking about it, and we know sometimes that might happen, and it might free me up. It might free Thomas Barber, Cody Pope. It might free Mary Jackson up. So we know what might happen because of what happened with Steve and how good he is. So. Can't wait to see how teams try to game plan for this defense. What has impressed you in practice about the offense? Um, they're a lot more explosive than they used to be. I say um, everybody knows we have two powerful running backs back there, three, including Kobe. Uh, but the receivers, I say they have developed and they're going to be a dangerous threat. I'll say that. Rashad, Tyler Johnson, Demetrius, Eric Carter, Phillip Howard. They're going to be some threats this year. You look for the offense to be more explosive overall. Yes, sir. All right, thanks, sir. Thank you all. Thank you.